been silent about this incident that took place on August 3rd when she was giving a speech here in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Ryan was there with a bodyguard. You just saw him walk through the frame. An unfortunate reflection of the fact that she's faced death threats for speaking out in the Trump age. But the bodyguard, Joelle Morris, took local editor Charlie Cradleville's camera. You can see it shaking there while he was filming the speech. Then the bodyguard forcibly removed the reporter from the event, as seen here on the hotel's uh, lobby security camera. Cradleville has filed a criminal complaint, and Morris is scheduled to appear in court on September 12th. Morris declined to comment to us, and up until now, so is Ryan. Cradleville has criticized her for not immediately condemning the use of violence against the journalists. Ryan is joining me now for her first interview on the matter. Uh, April, a lot of people have expressed concerns about this being a First Amendment violation, and it sure does look concerning to me. We can see in the video that uh, it seems like the bodyguard tries to say something to you when you're on stage starting your speech. Did you order the bodyguard to take the man's camera away and remove the reporter from the event? Well, first of all, Brian, before I even get to that, I want to say this. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I'm the first person who wants to get a story out, be it on TV or radio. And the only reason why I've been quiet is because of threat, a threat of lawsuits. Um, and my attorney said I can speak. But here's the thing. This is not about suppressing the press. My body of work stands for me. And no, I did not order anyone to do anything. At that moment, what you saw was my then bodyguard, who was concerned with my safety, come to me and say, stop talking. They were about 100 feet away from me. I didn't know what was going on or what was said. I was on the stage at the time. And that's tough when you're on stage and you're not sure what's going on. But why not have cameras at your speeches? What's the problem with having a person videotape your speech? Well, you know, this was a private event uh, for a nonprofit organization in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Our contract stated that um, if someone uh, wanted to come and film or if they wanted to interview me, they had to ask for permission. There was no request for permission and permission was not granted. Now, if they would have asked for permission, it would have been granted. And the reason why I do this, one, it's standard in the industry, and two, because I don't want my words twisted. And I get that. He says he did have permission. He says he has the documentation. He sent some of that according to me. According to my contract, according to my contract and, and with the organization, no one asked me for permission. Do you regret that the bodyguard... If he had asked right. me if it was asked, yes. Do you regret that the bodyguard put his hands on this reporter? To me, that's completely inappropriate. Well, again, um, my former uh, contracted security personnel um, thought, I guess, I suspect, was concerned for my safety. So maybe um, he just overreacted. The, Are you saying he just overreacted? Yes, yes. I remember and, and, I was giving... And, yeah, and, and, I, and then the days after this, we reviewed this. And mm -hmm. um, we decided not to contract with that organization anymore. But again, I believe in my humble opinion, or I assume that he was concerned about my safety. And you have spoken in the past about facing death threats, more than yes. one. Can you tell us if you know anything more about that? Because I know that's sensitive. It's a very sensitive situation. Um, I do receive death threats. I continue to receive death threats. The uh, atmosphere around me is charged. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I assume he may have overreacted because he was concerned for my safety. But um, it doesn't make you feel good <laughs> to get a death threat and have to send it to the FBI and local authorities. Um, I'm, I'm a person in the community. Um, I have children. I have friends. I have family. <sighs> it's, it's, a, it's a tough situation to live under, but I do it. And unfortunately, I have to have bodyguards around me. Here's what Washington Post's Eric Wemple wrote about this. He said, it's one thing to hire a bodyguard to protect a freedom of press advocate for death threats. It's another thing when the bodyguard undermines freedom of press on behalf of that freedom of press advocate. So what will be different in the future? Will there be something different in the future? It sounds like the bodyguard's no longer working for you, so that's one thing that'll be different. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, as long as this atmosphere continues, Brian, I'm going to have to have a bodyguard. Uh, but the protocol... Uh, is that the bodyguard is supposed to be with me. And that was not protocol. Oh, you mean um, because he left? Because he left to go allegedly assault the, can the, the journalist. You're saying he didn't follow the protocol. See, I didn't know what was going on at the time. Right, and you weren't okay. in the room when he did that at the, at the hotel in the lobby. Room. I, was, I was speaking 
So, and and at the very least, um, for those real journalists who are uh, saying the things that they're saying, I would hope that there may be a correction uh, for the error that, um, you know, some of the things have been said. Hey, isn't it concerning, though, that you're out there speaking privately? That you're, you know, I remember when I was giving a speech at a college and a couple InfoWars reporters showed up and they were asking me mm. a bunch of questions. I just thought the best thing to do was just to talk to them rather than try to ignore them or swat away their camera because that's not our job. Our job is not to stop people from asking questions. It's right, to help them right. ask questions. Right. And see, that's the issue. Um, if someone asked for permission, I would have granted it. But yeah. sometimes your words are twisted by people who don't necessarily understand you or what you're saying or who have an agenda. And that kind of thing can charge the atmosphere to create hate against me and death threats. So that is one of the reasons this was a protective measure. But again, we're reassessing a lot of things. My team, we're reassessing a lot of things.